Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the class. Uh, it is a raining day, rainy day today, and this will be the last class of this semester. I, I really appreciate your attendance of class in this semester. At the final class, I'm going to talk about design of return current path and isolation. In other words, it is related to design methodologies and understanding about the ground design, especially for ground, the digital ground. At first, I'm going to start with definition of ground and return current path. There will be several different definitions of ground. I'm going to uh, introduce them and eventually I'm going to give you correct concept of digital ground. At the second part of the class today, I'm going to talk about noise coupling by common return current path. That means sometimes some of your uh, return current may be overlapped with the other return current. And because of that, and with some impedance of ground, noise will be coupled between the IOs and between signal and uh, power. It could be a problem for uh, power supply induced jitters. At the third part of the class, I'm going to talk about isolation and filtering method. Uh, because if we have a common return current path, uh, it can create a, a noise coupling problem. So sometimes we have to isolate a different ground for different circuits. And I'm going to shortly uh, discuss about some packaging and PCB designs to improve the isolation and filtering. And at the end of the class, I'm going to summarize the class with design strategies. <clears throat> uh, there are a few different uh, definitions of ground. First, I would like to mention about safety ground. Uh, at the top of our building, we have lightning uh, pin so that it can uh, receive the lightning current and it will uh, conduct it around the building so that people will be safe inside the building. So first definition of uh, ground may be called as safety ground. It intends to protect human body from high current pulse in the nature. Sometimes it could be between the cloud and ground. Sometimes uh, between human to human, we may have uh, ESD. So to protect current uh, from safety point, uh, we usually have safety ground. Um, another uh, definition of ground is circuit ground. And we are assuming that in the circuit diagram, every ground has same voltage. And in order to, do, uh, to have that situation, uh, we have to have a ground impedance should be zero. But let's assume we have two different points of circuit ground. Let's assume we are connecting them. When we are connecting them, we have to use metals such as wires or planes. Each wire or plane has resistance at high frequencies because of skin effect loss, and it has certain inductance and capacitance. That means we will never have uh, zero impedance at ground. Because of that, we will never have a same zero voltage ground for all the circuit. At some point of the circuit, we can define a zero voltage, but it, other ground may not have zero voltage, especially for high-speed digital systems. So uh, in the circuit class, we may have circuit ground with these definitions, but actually we may not have this kind of circuit ground in digital system. Um, so definition of ground is digital ground, which I'm talking about in this class. In digital ground, the definition can be referred to this uh, expression. Digital ground 
means return current path. When we are sending signals, return a current has to come back through a reference plane, or when we are supplying the charge from decoupling capacitor to switching devices, return current has to, power return current has to come back. In both cases, the path of return current is defined as crystal ground. And sometimes in multi-layer PCB, return current path is called as reference plane. I think the meaning of return current path and reference plane might be almost the same. And this kind of path and plane could be called as distal ground. Because ground, a return current path has certain impedance in the distal ground, there, there are no two distal ground will have same voltage. So definition of circuit ground cannot be applied to distal ground. And in distal ground, we have two different uh, paths. First one is signal return current path. And second one is the power supply return current path. As I discussed in the previous class, um, depending on you are in a charging process or discharging process, or depending on where, your signal line is different reference to power plane or reference to the ground plane, depending on that situation, return current path will be different. Also, we I was mentioning that signal return, sometimes signal return current path and power return current path are separated. But in many cases, depending on your IO, IO signal trace, position and decoupling capacitor position, sometimes signal return current and power supply current could be overlap. Uh, that is very difficult part of the digital ground design. So how the electromagnetics determine return current path? I was saying that it comes back through low impedance path. Whenever they, the return current find low impedance path, it changes path. Sometimes return current path could be disconnected be, because of your mistake, uh, doubtings and trace design. And this return current has to go through the parasitic pathways. Sometimes through decoupling pathways, sometimes or just through adjacent uh, devices. And anyway, at each frequency ranges, return current goes through a low impedance path. So if you want to design very good distal system, you have to be able to figure out the turn current path for each IO depending on frequency, because depending on frequency, the turn current path will be different. Why is that? Because depending on frequency ranges, low impedance path will be different because the return current path has all all the uh, resistance component, inductive component, and capacitor component, and resonance frequencies. So if you have 100 or 1,000 IOs, you have to be able to check all the return current path for 100, 1,000 uh, uh, return current paths. If you have 1,000 decoupling capacitors at the chip level, package level, and PCB level, you have to check the power supply return current path. If there is any discontinuities, and it can, we can possibly create noise coupling, or sometimes if you have certain impedance of ground and a signal current and power current has the same return current paths, it will create a noise coupling between signal and power and power and signal. So right now, uh, I was summarizing three, three different paths. First one is safety ground. And when you are installing your refrigerator or some uh, home appliance which use the waters, sometimes water is conducted uh, uh, in terms of electricity. So you have to make safe, uh, sometimes you have to uh, make a ground of your home appliance to the ground. 
So some that's why sometimes our electric uh, consent has three uh, uh, connectivity because some of them are related to safety ground. So if there is any lightning or ESD, current will go through the safety ground rather than through the human body. That's how it can protect our human safety. And also we have circuit ground. And in some analog cases where current is very small, then even though we have certain ground impedance, voltage drop across the ground plane may be minimal. But in very high performance computing system, such as supercomputer data centers or AI computers, digital ground is really a matter and we have to be able to correctly design this digital ground. That is the main focus of the class today. This is one example of uh, a safety ground. Uh, I wanna give you some examples. Let's assume we have cloud, cloud in the sky, uh, we have nearly earth ground. Probably earth has some water because of that, it may have some low impedance pathways and low, I'm talking of very low frequencies. Between cloud and our earth water, probably we have plastic capacitance. And because of that, some charge will be induced to the cloud and probably opposite charge may be induced at the ground. Sometimes in a rainy day, if they, they, are, they can find some low impedance path, this positive charge and negative charge will combine together. And that is being called as lightning. And if that is hitting our building, uh, let's assume this is our building, we have to make a certain connectivity, low impedance path. We have some uh, lightning uh, pin and th that could be connected through a low impedance wire to the earth ground. Then this lightning current will go through these wires. So if we are sitting inside building, current will not go through our body and it will go through the outside of the building. And because of that, a uh, human can be uh, safe. This is uh, one of the example of light, uh, light safety ground. There is another case, let's assume that we have a cloud and on the road, we may have some water and we have charging capacitance, plastic capacitance. And if there's a lightning, it can hit uh, our car or airplane because our body of our car is made of metal. It can have some low impedance path. So it can, it can be conducted through the outside of body. And sometimes in the old days, we had uh, wires at the end of the car and it, it is uh, touching the surface of the ground and the lightning current will go through the, this path. In this frequency ranges, probably this could be a low impedance path. And because of that, uh, this high current will go through outside of the car and our passenger might be very safe. And this is a kind of concept of safety ground. So now I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, digital ground. Uh, I think the definition of digital ground is return current path at low frequency, at low with the low frequency at certain frequency ranges. I think the di digital ground design has certain difficulties. And I made some list of that uh, background. Number one is I think that is because it is unseen at the circuit diagram. 
Um, in circuit diagram, we usually uh, describe ground as like this waveform or this form. And when we are we have two ground, of course, current has to come back, and we are not seeing anything in this ground. So it is a it is a kind of black box. We are assuming that this impedance is zero, but that is not true. As I mentioned many times, it may have certain impedance of shaped as a function of frequencies. It may have certain capacitance, resistance, and inductance. So, but this ground is a totally black box at the circuit diagram. So it, we didn't have much chances to look in to what is happening at the ground. And as I mentioned that, uh, return current path is ground. So return current path could be line, trace, plane, or via. Any metal surface could serve as digital ground. It could be Sometimes we are assuming this is a power or this is grounds, this is signal traces, but Maxwell equation doesn't understand languages. So if any metal adjacent to uh, our, our IO, and it, if it has low impedance return current path, it could be distal ground. Another difficult part of uh, distal ground is parasitics are dominant especially at high frequencies. And it will have such an inductance and capacitance and resistance. So one of the most dominant element at high frequency uh, is the inductance. So that in many times I was saying that we have to make a very small similarly dimensional system for future computer system because if we can reduce the length of return current, we can reduce the inductance, then we can minimize the ground fluctuations. And return current has many different uh, frequency ranges. At the kilohertz range, return current is responsible for integrated voltage regulator, DC dish converters. In gigahertz range, return current path should be considered when you are designing CPU, GPU, and clock. And over 10 gigahertz, if you are designing HPA, HDMI or PCI Express or high-speed interface, you have to uh, think about the turn current pathways. Number five uh, difficulty is the turn current path is very frequency dependent. So you have to be, be able to figure out the return current path at the different uh, frequency ranges. Number six, uh, difficulties comes from the fact that return current path has multi-level hierarchical pathways. Sometimes return current may come back through on-chip interconnection, sometimes through package interconnection, sometimes PCB interconnection, sometimes through cable charge, or sometimes through a charge. The last difficult comes from three-dimensional structures. Return current path is really three-dimensional. So when you want to simulate using computers uh, about the return current path and impedance, you have to use 3D EM simulations. And it takes long, long computing time. So it takes a lot of computing resources in order to figure out or in order to estimate there's uh, some noise issues associated with digital ground. I think these seven difficulties are main reason why I think digital ground design is much, much difficult than conventional circuit design. Uh, <clears throat> so far, I was talking about the definition of digital ground. And also I was saying about the, why it is so difficult to design good ground. Now in the second part of class, I'm going to talk about 
noise coupling issues by common return current pair. So because we have so many different IOs and so many decoupling capacitors depending on charging and discharging, some of return current will be overlap and that will create some noise coupling between IOs or between signal and power. So for to promote your imaginations, I'm going to give you some examples of 3D PCB structures. This kind of thing is very, very common mistakes. And I would like to give you an example. <clears throat> Let's assume that we have four layer PCB. First layer is signal and second layer is ground. And third layer is layer one is signal, layer two is um, ground, layer three is power, layer four is signal. This is very typical uh, design of four layer PCB. Some years ago, I was involved in the design of very high layer, high la number of layer PCB. Sometimes the number of layer was more than 30 layers. Sometimes it could be a hundred layers. So for some high performance computer and package designs, but this is very simple case. <clears throat> Let's assume on the top of layer one, we have transmission line of 50 ohm. We have that. Then if we are sending signal from IC through a wire, the turn current will go come back through a top surface of ground because signal and in this case, signal and ground are facing each other. So majority of capacitance will be constructed between signal and ground. By controlling the dimension of the signal trace, we can make 50 ohm. And in order to make a connection to the IC, we have to design a via. This is via. A return current has to go through the via. And on the signal layer one, there should be a short traces. And eventually, it is connected to the chip. So return current has to come back through this path. However, let's take a look at about the power. In order to make a switching, we have to supply the switching current from decoupling capacitors. And I'm assuming that in the gigahertz range, some of plastic capacitance between ground and power plane will have certain capacitance and this capacitance will serve to supply the power supply current. Because of that, power supply current will go through uh, this power plane and through the via, it will go through and through the wire, it will be supplied to the, uh, the chip. But the turn current for this power supply has to go through the ground wire, through the via, and it will go back to the decoupling capacitors at the bottom surface of the ground plane. So what, one thing, one obvious thing is that in this section, let's take a look at the ground plane layer two, signal return current will go through the top surface and the power return current will go through the bottom surface. So what I'm saying is, in the high frequency range, if skin depth is really thin, these two current may be separated. But in most case, it will be overlap. On the same metal plane, on the top surface, ground will go this, ground return current will go this direction, power return current will be this direction. So this kind of thing is, I said, common return current path. But let's take a look at ground via. 
ground VR will be a path for signal return current as well as power return current. And this VR has certain inductance. So if you are, have the signal return current and uh, also you have power return current, because of LDIDT, voltage at the signal line, ground, signal ground will be affected by power return current and the ground voltage position for signal line will be also affected by power return current. So it is being called as noise coupling. Um, I want to remind you that VR has very small inductance because that is very small size. But in the gigahertz range, we cannot neglect that anymore. So many, many cases in actual PCB and package design, we have this kind of situations. And uh, usually the PCB package chip designer doesn't care about this kind of things. Uh, some years ago, I was involved in HP, HDMI chip design. In those cases, interconnection number of IOs in those chips was about 100. And I checked every IO return current path, every decoupling capacitor return current path. And fortunately, the chip is still working very fine. And now, the number of interconnection could be thousand and millions. Still, we have to do that. Uh, this is very difficult part of uh, ground design. And this is a simple case. Let's assume that we, you are having 100 layers. How difficult, how complicated it could be. So um, many companies or many circuit designers doesn't pay much attention to this kind of problem. And somehow later they found that their chip is not as good as their competitors. They didn't know about that. So signal integrity team strength will be very, very important to improve performance of their chips. Probably without consideration of this kind of noise coupling, their chip may be working well, but if their voltage is a little bit dropped or temperature is a little bit high, or sometimes noise bigger or data rate, or if some chip can work over 10 gigahertz BPS, some chip may be 8 gigabps. That small amount of competitiveness different could come from this kind of understanding of digital ground. Let's, uh, a little look at a little bit further cases. So let's assume you have sig you have a signal. Return current has to go back through a path. And if you have power current from decap, you can isolate return current by having this separate ground. What I mean is that you have signal ground and power ground. If they are separated, we can uh, suppress the isolations. So golden rule is for each IO, you have separate ground. Let's assume you have thousand IOs, you have to have thousand different ground pins. If you have thousand different decaps or thousand different power supply connection, you have to have separate uh, ground pin. And you should be able to have separate ground plane. So that means ground number of ground should be increased significantly. When you are designing uh, your signal, you have to make sure that you have very good return current path so that you have to maintain certain impedance. When you are designing 
power supply network design, also you have to uh, provide the low impedance path by having ground as close as possible to your power plane and power pin. In addition to that, you have to have separate ground for each signal and for each power. That means number of ground pin via a plane will be increased significantly. Let's assume that you have a uh, 10 IO. Probably in the future, you may have 1,000 signal ground. Probably you may have 1,000 uh, power ground. And, and more and more uh, ground will be used and they have to be separated. And because of that, it will increase the cost of your chip package and uh, your PCB. And so improve, to, imp to improve, to enhance your uh, data performance and computing performance uh, with the higher uh, ca uh, computational capabilities, you may need more and more ground. Why we need more? Because we have to make a low impedance path. And second reason is we want to isolate each return current path. Now let's move a little bit a uh, step further to make you to be more interested in this subject. I'd like to uh, bring up Another uh, examples of four layer PCB. We have four layer PCB. Layer one is assigned for signal and layer two is assigned for power and layer three is assigned for ground and layer four is assigned for Layer four is assigned for signal. In the previous example, layer two was ground and layer three was power plane. Now we are, we are designing the opposite way. Then if I'm sending signal from IC to outside and 50 ohm transmission line metal metal is designed on layer one and because power plane is underneath 50 ohm uh, or reference plane return current path will go through the power plane return current has to come back and it has go through the chip through the trace and wire but please remember that this is power plane. So this has one volt. In terms of DC voltage, this is not ground. In digital sense, it is return current path. So this, this return current path cannot directly connect it to ground pin. So if there is a plastic capacitance, it will go through that plastic capacitance. This IC has ground, but that is usually zero volts. But this reference plane is one volt. So we cannot connect them directly. Return current has go through some plastic capacitance. Sometimes we may have certain decoupling capacitance. Here we may have certain capacitance, probably this return current has to go through the decoupling capacitance and maybe go something like that. So in order to provide in this kind of case, uh, if you want to make a continuity of ground or return current path, we have to sometimes intentionally or non-intentionally, we have to put plastic capacitance and that will give us return current path. 
Now let's think about uh, power supply. We assume that we have some decoupling capacitance, a uh, capacitance between ground and power. And then sometimes re this return current can go through decoupling capacitance and ground, and it will go through the VI and connect. Sometimes in order to provide the return current path, it can go through the plastic capacitance or we can add some capacitance between signal and power. Uh, that will give you some reflection. Sometimes if there is decoupling capacitance, it will go through that decoupling capacitor and it will switch the return current path and it will go to the chip. So there might be number one path, number two path, and number three paths. So depending on frequency range, the return current path may be different. They will choose different paths. Now let's uh, talk about, we think about we have decoupling capacitor, then power supply current has to go through this path. Power plane and the via and pin, and then the turn current path of this current will go through this path. So here again, the turn current of signal and power will be overlapped at the PCB trace and pin and via. So because of this common return current path, if there is any inductance and capacitance, and resonance says uh, it will it will create the plastic path and it will create the noise coupling between signal and power. I'd like to shortly summarize uh, these uh, two different cases that in the distal domain, common return current path can be through pin, trace, ball, via, plane. And sometimes the coupling capacitor can solve both for power supply and also return current path. As I said before, sometimes some signal return current is going through the power plane and sometimes it is going through the signal plane and they have to switch the current at certain point and decoupling capacitor helps to so that they can switch the return current path between power plane and ground plane. There are sometimes plastic capacitors can also solve as return current path. Sometimes it could be cheap on cheap plastic capacitors, on packaging plastic capacitors, on PCB plastic capacitors, and cable and session levels. Uh, Jonghyun, uh, can you summarize this page for me? Now, so far I was talking about number one in at the beginning of the class, I was talking about definition of ground. At the second part of class, uh, I gave you some examples uh, that uh, depending on frequency ranges, we may have different return current path. And sometimes we, I saw you some cases where we common return current paths. If there is some impedance at the return current path, it can uh, generate noise coupling problem because of common return current path. 
also at the end of previous slide, I was saying that it could be many different metallization via ball, plane, and any metal structures, or even plastic capacitance or decoupling capacitance can serve as uh, a return current path. When they are changing the return current path at the certain resonances, uh, capacitance path uh, can provide the return current path. Also, I was mentioning that in order to minimize noise coupling by common return current path, we should separate the return current path for each IO or pitch for each decoupling capacitors and for each power supply. That's why we may need more and more ground in the future in, in digital systems. Now, I'd like to give you some examples to show that how we can uh, reduce the uh, common return current path. This is number one example. In long, long time ago, when we, we had, um, we had this kind of uh, package, let's assume you have uh, IC and it may have uh, packaging pins at the time, num because number of IO pin is limited, uh, let's assume if we have four signals in the connection and after four, we have one ground pin. That means the turn current path for S1 will go to this pin, the turn current path for S2 will go through this pin, and the turn current S4 will go through this identical ground. So all of the return current will have common return current path. If we have uh, ground impedance of, because of this interconnection, it can create common return current path. Another, uh, so to minimize the noise coupling and impedance mismatch, we can assign a ground for each S1, S2, S3, and S4 pin, we can add ground between them, G1, G2, G3, G4. If you have G, the turn current for S1 will go through this, this uh, left part of the, your metal, and S2 return current go back through on the right edge of the ground pin. So by adding G1, G2, G3, G4, we, we are able to uh, separate the return current path and we can maintain very good impedance matching. Of course, we can also use the differential signaling scheme. And in those cases also, we may have a virtual ground between them. And in the cable, now this is another uh, case. Let's assume that you have cable, this is cross-section, you have wires. And if you look at from the side, you may have signal wires, one, two, three, four. And if you have same shield, then the turn current of this signal wire S1 and S2 and S3 and S4 will come back to the same shield. In those cases, if the shield has certain impedance, yes, definitely um, it, it will create the common impedance, uh, return current path impedance noise coupling. Another possible uh, cable design is that, if let's assume this is cable shield, if you have signal wires, you have shield for each wires. So inside cable, you have signal, for each signal, you have shield cables. For each signal wire, you have shield. So because shields return current path for each wire are separated, we can isolate return current path coupling and cross talk will be minimal. 
Of course, if you are using more ground shield for each return term path isolation, you may have uh, more metal. So this cable is more flexible because it is using the less metal, but this is very, it's gonna be very rigid cable. That is the trade-off between the flexibility of cable and the quality of cable. Um, in multi-layer PCB, if you have signal here, return current may come back to this surface. If, if you have another signal and you're gonna have a return current path. So if you have same metal, it can possibly create the common mode return a common return current path noise coupling. But if the frequency is very high, skin depth is very thin, skin depth is very thin, these two currents may be separated. But in the middle frequency range, skin depth is quite uh, thicker, and then we cannot do that. Then in, in those cases, we have to separate this ground plane. In this case, let's assume we have layer one, layer two, and layer three. To improve that, we may need layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four. Three layer structure has to be changed in the four layer. In those cases, return current for signal one could be on the layer two, and signal return current for this signal could be on layer three, and they, are phys they could be physically separated. And in those cases, this could be a ground plane and this could be a ground plane. Um, let's assume that you have signal traces and you have signal traces, but unfortunately in some cases you have a slab underneath that is a cut of metal. So Return current for S1 cannot go through and because this is disconnected, so it will go through uh, a long path that will create the inductance. And the return current path for S2 may go through the same return current path, inductive path. And because of this inductive uh, pathways and LDIDT, we can create a noise coupling between S1 and S2. This is another example of that. So sometimes in order to uh, avoid these issues, we can add some capacitance here. So in those cases, return current for S1 may go through, um, may go through, may go through uh, this path and uh, return current for S21 can go through this path, and in those cases, I1 and I2 can be separated. I'm sure there will be a hundred different cases uh, to talk about the return current path, common return current path problem, and how to make that isolation. I isolate the return current path. One possibility is to add ground and another possibility is to add capacitance. In those cases, uh, possibly the return current could be separated. Uh, this is another example. Let's assume we have differential signaling, data one plus and data one. This is differential signaling. And let's assume we have differential signaling D2 plus D2 minus. This is one um, a possible uh, design, and uh, we assume that we have virtual ground plane between D1 plus and D1 minus. So if they have perfect virtual ground plane, and this, this virtual ground plane, the turn current path for one, and this the turn current path I2, I2 will be completely separated because they have perfect virtual ground plane 
and the turn current will go through that virtual ground plane for each differential pairs. So there will be no crosstalk between them. However, sometimes if there is some unbalance between plus and minus, you remember that common mode current will be generated. You remember that if uh, some month ago in this class, in this semester class, uh, when we were talking about differential signaling design, if there is some skew between the, the line trace or uh, plastic or combinations, com a differential mode will be converted to a common mode. And common mode could be a big source of EMI and noise coupling. I was talking about that. If there is any common mode, this common mode will be overlap. It may, this common mode current may, common mode current for I1 and common mode current I2 can go through some pathways. And if that has inductance, it can create the noise coupling. Common mode noise coupling by common return current path, common and common. So sometimes in order to isolate common mode uh, current between different, different uh, differential pairs, we can add ground. So common mode return current can go through this path. And of course, differential mode current will go through this, uh, this virtual ground plane. And if there is any uh, common mode current by differential pair two, then may go through this. It may go through this, it may go through this. Somehow the common mode of differential one and differential two could be separated. But still, I, I can see that uh, some of common mode will be overlap in this ground ball and possibly it can create some noise coupling between them. So in order to completely separate the common mode return current of differential pair and pair two, we can add two ground balls. That will be a path for common mode uh, of differential pair one and common mode differential uh, current may go through these two. So we can add two uh, ground balls. This is another example of isolation and separation of return current path. In connector design, also same. We can add two ground between, um, between the differential pairs. By having that, we can control the differential current and common mode current of differential pair one and differential pair two will be separated. So far, I was talking about how we can uh, isolate the turn current pathways for different uh, interconnection, a different signal. Now let's talk about power as well. So this is one example. Uh, let's assume that you have differential pair you have differential pair, you have differential pair, you have differential pair. For each differential pair to provide the common mode return current path, we, we have to add ground pins. Probably we can add one more pin to separate the common mode return current path for each differential pairs. But at the same time, we have to make a connection to the power one for core, power two for PLL, power three for analog circuit and power four for digital IO. In those cases also we have to add a ground for each uh, power 
two separate return curve paths. And all this effort to increase the uh, ground pin via trace plane is to number one, to provide the low impedance return current path. Number two, is separate the return current path to minimize the uh, noise coupling. So this will be the end of the class today. I will summarize this slide. How are you gonna design the return current path? Number one, secure return current path for each signal and power connection. And number two, minimize the impedance of return current path. Number three, be careful about resonances. At the resonances, noise coupling and EMI will be maximum. And you have to split the return current paths to minimize the noise coupling between different signals and different powers and between signal and power. And isolation and balancing means that differential signaling could be a way of to achieve that. This is the end of my class today and this will be the end of the class in this semester. Um, this signal integrated and EMI subject is not very classical subject. So it is very difficult to make a very nice presentation. Uh, in, for example, in electromagnetic theories, if you can, so you can apply the Maxwell equations in time domain and with some boundary conditions, we can completely solve and we can under beautifully derive the equations and we can explain. In the circuit theory as well, a circuit can be represented by RLC circuit with transistors by having uh, differential equations, we can uh, nicely describe the physics associated with circuit behavior. But in the digital interconnection design in signal power and ground, uh, it is very depending on each cases. So it is not a nice uh, uh, subject, but without this understanding, even though you make a very good design, actual during the actual implementation, many problems can be attached and your system may not work very well. So uh, you, our young students may have your own engineering life and science life more than 30 or 50 years. Sometimes in the future in your life, you're gonna see this kind of situation many, many times. And, and through this class, you can understand some basic concept and you can revisit this website again and you can enjoy what you are doing. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day.